Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to learn how to create and post manual journals in Xero. I use the Australian version of Xero, but you can use this lesson for any version of Xero that you like. And also, if you'd like to learn more about Xero, check out the links in the description below to our courses. So let's jump into Xero now and see how it's done. So if you haven't done so already, just from the main dashboard here in the demo company, just go to accounting in the menu and then manual journals. And when you get to this screen, just click on new journal. Okay, so in here we see the screen that we need to create and post a manual journal. So at the top, it always has this little message here that just says that it recommends your accountant or bookkeeper create journals for you unless you actually have experience managing your general ledger. So it's basically just a little warning there. You can obviously go ahead and do it if you like, but it's just telling you to make sure um, that you know what you're doing. All right, so let's just do a little tour of this screen. So starting from the top here, you can see we've got a little narration box there. And what you can do is you can put the name of the journal in there. So we'll do that in a minute. We'll give it a name. And then just below that, there's a little checkbox here. And if you tick it, then the narrations added to the journal line description. So these lines down here will be the same thing that you type up here. So if you want that to happen for your journal, just check that box. If you don't, if you want these descriptions to be different to what's up here, then uncheck the box. So I'll just leave it checked for now. And then also down here, there's another checkbox here for show journal on a cash basis report. And there's a little bit of help there if you'd like to read about that. Okay, so what we also need to do is give our journal a date. So we just choose a date as you normally do in zero. And then over here, there's another date box. And this is if you're going to create an auto reversing journal. So you might be doing a month end journal, for example, where you want it to reverse back um, after the new month starts, you can go in and you can choose another date um, at which it reverses. And that's optional. So you don't actually need to put anything in there if you're creating a journal that is not meant to reverse. So the next thing we have over here is our usual uh, option here to add files or attach files. So if you have a PDF or a spreadsheet or something that you want to keep with journal, you can upload it here. You can add it from your Xero library or upload it from your device as normal. And then coming down to the journal area, you can see here we have the options here to make the amounts inclusive or exclusive of tax, which in this case in Australia is GST, or you can choose no tax. Okay, so down here, this is where you put in the description for each journal line, and you also put in your general ledger account number, and you put in your tax rate as well, um, which because that's on no tax, that's sort of grayed out at the moment. And then you can put in your region there, which is a tracking category. So whatever tracking categories you've got set up in zero will come through here if you want to select those. And then you've got your debit side and your credit side. And it's given you six lines here that you can use, but you can add new lines just by um, clicking on that button there, or you can delete lines just by clicking on the little red X there. Okay, and then down the bottom, it gives you a subtotal and it also gives you a total and it will go ahead and check the debits and credits for you. So you'll see that in action when we actually start creating the journal. And as per usual for a lot of documents in Xero, you've got the option to save it as a draft or you can go ahead and just post it straight away or you can cancel it if you don't need it. All right, so let's go ahead and create a journal now. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate the screen and we'll go into accounting and reports and we'll pull up a profit and loss report. And we'll just see if we can find something simple that we can post and then we can have a look at our result later on. So this is just run for the current period that I'm in. And I can see here in the freight and courier expense line, there's actually a minus there. So it looks like something has been incorrectly posted. So that could be a good one. We can go in and have a look at that. And if it needs to be fixed, we'll post a journal to fix it. So I'll just click on that. Okay, so that's a receivable invoice there. I'll click on it again. Okay, so now we're in the invoice. So this is a sales invoice by the lookout of it. And for some reason, um, the freight and courier portion 
um, has been posted to an expense account. So even though that might be right, let's just assume that it's wrong and we'll go ahead and we'll post this to an income account instead. Okay, so it is actually going to be $9 and nine plus GST. So it's going to be $10 including GST. And it's been posted there to the freight and courier general ledger code. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a reversing entry for that. And we'll put it to an income account. So we'll come back over here and I'll put in a narration. Okay, so I've just put in there to correct an incorrect courier charge posting. Um, obviously you can put whatever you like in there. If you've got a different way of doing it, you can um, just put your own description in there. I'll just leave the date as today. Um, and then I'll come down here and we'll start the lines. So if I click on that first line, you can see that it's actually brought down that description there because we've got that ticked. So like I said before, if you don't want that to happen, make sure you uncheck that box and then you'll need to type in um, your own description. But just to keep moving, I'll just keep that as is. So the account was freight and courier. So you can just go through and select that one. Now the tax rate there, BAS excluded is actually wrong. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make this tax exclusive and that way it's the same as over here on the sales invoice so we can compare it more easily. And that tax rate is actually meant to be GST on expenses. So we'll just come back over here and we'll choose um, oops, this one here and we'll choose GST on expenses like that. So if I had that selected right away, um, we wouldn't have had to do that little bit there. That would have come up automatically. So it hasn't been assigned to a region, so I won't worry about that. And then we've just got our debit and our credit. So that's come through as a minus expense. So what we need to do is put it through as an expense. So we'll just put it on the debit side here. So if I just put in $9.09 .09 exclusive of GST, and you can see that subtotal down, it's added the GST in at 10%. So I've got the total there of $10. And that gives us a total for the journal on the debit side of $10. And it also means, obviously we don't have anything on the credit side yet. So it tells us down the bottom that the total is out by $10. So we can't actually post that. If I clicked on the post button now, it would give us an error message. So I'll just try that now. Yep, and sure enough, it's told us up there that the debits and the credits must equal. So you can't post a journal if you've got something down here telling you that the total is out. Okay, so let's do the next line. So once again, we'll just bring that same description down. And for this one, we'll just put it to an income account or a revenue account. So we'll just choose this other revenue and that's come through as GST on income. We'll just assume that this is all correct. Um, so I'm just obviously doing this as an example. Um, so for the purposes of this exercise, we'll just assume this is all correct. So once again, it's got the $9.09. .09. This time you can see zero actually populated that on its own. I didn't actually type it in. So it's just assumed that we wanted the balance to go into the credit um, amount right there. It's added the GST on. It's given us $10 now on the credit side, which equals the $10 on the debit side. And now we don't have that little message down the bottom saying that we're out of balance. So now we can save it as a draft. Um, if we, for example, needed somebody to review our journal before we could actually post it, or if we're happy with it and we're allowed to post it, we can just go ahead and post it, which is what I'll do now. So I'll just click on post. Okay, so this is taking me back to the draft tab, but we actually posted that. So we'll click on posted. And there it is there to correct an incorrect courier charge posting today's date debits and credits both ten dollars all right so now if we come back over here and we run our profit and loss again okay so that should be the right period there okay so you can see down here now in the operating expenses we don't have that negative amount for nine dollars and nine and instead We've got it up here in other income um, where we put it to other revenue for $9.09. .09. So that journal has posted correctly and we fixed up that little problem there in the PL 
And now you know how to create and post a simple manual journal in Xero.